Okay, Nimish. Um, new vocab word, interval. Interval is the relationship between two notes. For example, one, two, three, four, five. A power chord is a first or root note and a fifth. Uh, this is a first and a third, you know, the relationship between two notes. Uh, we learned the major scale. Okay, let's just go first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, yeah. And all of our chords that we've learned refer to those uh, notes in some capacity. We talked about how firsts, thirds, and fifths are the notes that are in regular major chords and minor chords. Minor I'll come back to. For example, the G major scale we learned here. So that'd be G's, B's, and D's. And if we look at all of our common G's, we got G, B, D, G, D, G. Any of them, the bar chord, G, D, G, B, D, G. And then when it comes to minor chords, they have a flat third. The, the minor scale isn't just, it's not just, but that said, we want to be able to hear the interval, a flat third, which instead of, sounds like, and that's the note that's in our minor chords. Like if we think about G minor, or A minor, so major chord, minor chord. So there we go. Seventh chords wise, we talked about, you know, a regular major chord, major seven, that has the regular seven in it. The chord called G7 has a flat seven in it. That we can put in anywhere but in the bass and it'll work. And so forth. So all of your chord colors uh, with the exception of like the nomenclature, it's like flat six or sharp 13, things like that that you don't understand yet. They all refer to those seven notes in the major scale. And you can start on the sixth string or the fifth string playing that, but not the fourth string because the second string changes everything. Um, cool, so that's just one spot on the fretboard where you can get used to hearing and looking at those intervals. And that's mostly what we went over. Um, cool. And let me know if you want any more um, info on the songs we're working on or anything. But yeah, you know, make that in your training project. Just try to work towards a world where you have an easier time uh, identifying what uh, what notes you're playing at any given moment when you're playing chords. Given we, have just, we haven't prioritized learning note names on the second, third, and fourth string yet, the first string is just the same as the sixth string. This one's the sixth string. This one's the first string. Try to overcome that brain fart, which I can't think of a better term for between this and next lesson. And then while we're at it, um, you know, fourth and third are the ones that people are prone to confusing. But yeah, so the first string and sixth strings are both G's, these are both A's, they're both E strings. When it comes to figuring out note names on like the third string, picturing an octave is the best way to do it. If you're like, what note is this? You can just trace it back there. This is two D's. The same two that we have there. Um, so a power chord. And active. Cool. All right, man. Good stuff. Very good questions today. Enjoy the rest of the song. And like we talked about, once you've gone over the sections, which is the way I want you to approach it, just go for it. The you know hustle and sports element of I'm just gonna get after this and try to play the whole thing. Be sure that you don't limit yourself to practice tempo once you've memorized the structure. Cheers. I will see you in three weeks at the same time. And happy practicing and safe travels.